Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. In this episode, we'll team up with our master plumber, Mike, as he takes us through the ins and outs of boiler system safety and efficiency. In part one of this two-part series, we'll look at combustion air and drafting. Hey Mike, what are you up to? Oh, hi Ben. Good to see you. Yeah, you too, Ben. Today we're going to be looking at boiler systems. We have uh, a house here that has a boiler, and uh, but we also have a water heater. And uh, in this particular mechanical room, we have a, a dryer, and it's kind of a confined area. We'll kind of look at uh, the boiler like we do a clean test and tune on a furnace. Go through the boiler, do a combustion analysis, and those those things. So we're also going to be looking at how our appliances draft um, when, uh, say, the dryer's running and the doors are shut. Make sure that uh, our system's drafting correctly. Okay, when I come into uh, any mechanical room, I just take a general um, shopping list of what I see, what's going on. So we'll just start right here at the boiler. Uh, what we have here is a Volant 80,000 80, BTU uh, input um, low pressure water boiler couple things I noticed right off the bat without digging into it is uh, the vent damper back in this area right here has been it looks like it's failed and someone has wired it open so it's not even being used it's just wired in the open position the vent damper actually is an efficiency device it uh, helps increase the efficiency of this boiler uh, the combustion air for this um, actually comes in through this little area right here and we have a uh, this grill here which doesn't allow for very much air the actual free area on this is minimal um, as you can see um, doesn't meet uh, national fuel gas code um, as far as the combustion air for this room um, this is definitely going to be short um, the proper amount of combustion air for this room. Come down the line here, we got a water heater, a natural draft water heater that ties in the flue with the same flue as the uh, boiler. Uh, the relief valve on this actually drops down into the crawl space. We have a laundry room. Um, one of the things you want to avoid is uh, rooms that have soaps. These soaps are, and the, the fumes from the soaps and the bleaches actually go through the appliances and uh, most manufacturers do not recommend uh, having your fuel appliances in the same room as these chemicals because it, uh, it will deteriorate the heat exchanger on these. Uh, the other thing about this room is it's a fairly small room. The doors probably shut quite often. With the door shut and the dryer running, there's a really good chance that we create a negative pressure in here. One good thing that I notice here is right over here and in this room that's connecting is a carbon monoxide detector uh, which is a very uh, it's a positive thing um, that if if this does backdraft and there is CO that uh, unit would catch that prior to doing any diagnostics work uh, what I want to do is check for gas leaks and uh, I go down into the crawl space in this house check the gas leak check use this uh, leak detector check for gas leaks down there check for gas leaks at the appliance. Um, I basically do the same technique all the way through um, all the gas lines and make sure I don't have any leaks. If I do have leaks, I need to fix them before I continue with any of my diagnostics. One of the issues with this appliance is the gas line um, actually comes in through the back of this, this uh, boiler and it's very difficult to get to the shutoff. Um, and even to get to the gas line, but it's back behind here and I'm taking the uh, gas detector along that trying to determine if I have any leaks and it looks like we're good on this. If there was a leak, um, this thing would make a sound like this um, if a gas leak was detected. At this point what we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, put this room into worst case com combustion, um, worst case CAS, combustion air zone. 
uh, this uh, tube actually goes outside. Uh, we're going to hook it to our DG700. It'll be our reference. Uh, we put the home in the winter conditions. All the doors are closed. All the windows are closed. Um, we will turn on any fans, exhaust fans, and we'll try to create what would be considered the worst um, case combustion air zone in here. So we'll turn on our DG700. Um, we're going to read our pressure with respect to outside. Okay, we need to get baseline pressure. So uh, we're on pressure, pressure. Um, we're going to get baseline pressure. We'll start the calculation. Now this thing will go through a process and average out um, the baseline pressure. We'll let it go for 30 seconds or so. We select enter and now we're at uh, everything's with respect to baseline pressure. Okay now so at this point I'm gonna um, based on this being a small room, small area, we'll make we'll have this door shut. We'll have the door um, back here shut. We're going to turn on this bathroom uh, exhaust fan. We're going to turn on the dryer and we're going to see what our baseline or what our worst case pressure is with respect to outside in here. Okay, we'll turn on the dryer. And it looks to me like we're uh, we're really we're five and a half pascals negative. If you look at uh, BPI's protocol, if you have a natural draft boiler or furnace commonly vented with a water heater, which we do, then the limits for CAS are negative three pascals. So we're in excess of that. We our worst case combustion air zone. Um, this is not a good situation. We need uh, more air in this room. We can also even just take and use our uh, smoke detector or our smoke um, and uh, put it by the flue. Okay, now I don't have this running right now, but normally this would not be backdrafting and it's backdrafting right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our appliance and it needs to stop backdrafting within one minute. Okay, we're still back drafting. We're starting to get a little bit of draft, but we do still have some draft back drafting effect here. Basically, we're past a minute and we still have back drafting. This fails worst case combustion air zone test. While we're doing the uh, com combustion air zone testing, we want to make sure that we're not exposed to over 35 parts per million of CO ourselves. Uh, this unit's back drafting. Uh, if it's not, if it doesn't have a good burn, it's going to be kicking out some CO, and we would be breathing that CO, which is a deadly gas. So we want to be monitoring the CO in our uh, ambient air where we're working, and make sure it's always below 35 parts per million. So we failed worst case combustion air zone uh, under winter time conditions. So in order to move forward, what we need to do is we have to turn off the fans, we need to open the doors, and we need to see if we have draft um, under the best of conditions. And if we do have draft under the best of conditions, then we can continue. If we don't have draft, then we cannot continue with our uh, diagnostics. We would have to solve the problem. Uh, uh, before we could continue uh, with further work. At this point, we have all the doors open, the fans are off, and you can see um, we have uh, our baseline uh, pressure reading is, is uh, definitely below the, uh, the threshold. We're okay at this point, so we, we can continue. Uh, so at this point, we will get the, uh, the actual draft reading from uh, this water heater. We'll get the water heater fired. We can use our DG700 to get the reading. 
put our probe in the, our flue stream. Okay, and then we'll go over and watch our DG700 and see what our draft is. So we have minus three pascals of draft. If we look at our chart here, we're, we're at 80 degrees. So we use this formula right here. This is the BPI's uh, formula. At 80 degrees, we need to have at least minus 0.75 inch, uh, pascals. We have minus 3.3 pascals. So we do have um, sufficient draft on this appliance right now. We want to get let this uh, appliance r uh, run for a while, get it to steady state. We've established draft with one appliance running. Now we're going to run the second appliance and make sure we have draft with both of them running. Now I'm just jumping this to, um, to simulate a call for heat. And we want this uh, appliance to run for five, ten minutes, more, probably ten minutes with a boiler. It takes a while for it to heat up to, and hit steady state. We want it to run for a while, get up to steady state, and check for draft at that point. Just like uh, with the water heater, we'll put our uh, probe in here, and we'll read our draft on the DG700. Again, we want to have at least minus 0.75 pascals, and in this case, uh, both appliances are running, and we have minus two pascals and as it heats up the draft starts to pick up a little more and more so basically we've established draft and we can continue with our diagnostics at this point okay so uh, we have a little bit of a problem with our worst case combustion air zone it comes down to we don't have proper combustion air to this room this little combustion air right here right down here just doesn't cut it okay in order to this this goes to outside um, but it's low and it goes out if you want just one opening using the national fuel gas code you need to have an opening on the high up high and in this case that opening would be um, would have to have uh, 53 square inches of opening if there was a metal louver on the outside that's about a nine inch diameter circle going to the outside with a metal louver on the outside to supply the combustion air in here. When we're sizing the uh, amount of combustion air we need to supply to a room, what we do is we take into account the uh, BTU input of the, the boiler, which in this case is 80,000 BTUs. The BTU input of the water heater, in this case is 40,000 BTUs. We have a dryer here. If this was a gas dryer, we would have to include the BTU input of, of the gas dryer. However, this is an electric dryer, so it doesn't come into the equation. So basically, we have 120,000 BTUs of fuel gas that are going in, um, and we go to the National Fuel Gas Code, and it tells us uh, the protocol for how, how large of openings we need to the outside, or if we're using inside air, um, how, how large our openings need to be to get that combustion air to communicate with our appliances. That would be one simple solution, and then abandon this low one, because um, if you want just one opening, it needs to be within 12 inches of the, of the ceiling. The other solution is, is we can have grills in this door. It, it would be 160 square inches, which is about 13 by 13 with a metal grill high, metal grill low on this door, and on this door right here, high and low that goes out to this open area that has 6,000 cubic feet of volume that could be used for the combustion air. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. Join us for part two of this series when we pick back up with Mike for the clean test and tune. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.